All right, Arca at Auto Club. So steering ratio, doesn't matter. You can be at 16 to one, you can be at 12 to one, I don't care. Just know that you don't wanna overstep your bounds when you're steering so that you're uh, wearing extra tire. Uh, steering offset, I have it minus 12 because that's what the straight on the straightaway is for your steering wheel. If you wanna have a little bit more offset to the left then bringing that closer to zero. And then brake bias, I just keep all the way down. Uh, not for the hot lap because we're not going to use throttle for the hot lap, but later in the race run, we're going to be drag and brake in three and four. And because of that, you want the minimum brake bias whenever you're in a pure brake dragging situation, unless the track is so hot that it really causes you to slide. In that case, you just keep the brake bias as low as possible without that right rear sliding. That's a good rule of thumb when you're picking a brake bias. So I think this should be lap one here because these two mile tracks usually can get your tires up to temp fast enough. But we'll try two laps, but I'm still gonna go for it for each lap. So you don't have to drive right by the wall here. You just wanna make sure not to slide your rear tire because that's losing momentum. And then you wanna straighten out your wheels as early as possible because that helps your car uh, get up to speed faster. I'm not gonna go to the apron either because those transitions kinda of kill your speed. I'm gonna do a little blip out of the throttle on entry and then get right back in it. I wanna be rotating under, under throttle here like that. You can see how my left front is pretty much glued to that seam, and that allows me to whip around the corner pretty much. Then three and four, we're gonna be taking it a little wider, but we're gonna be going to the bottom. So basically late apex, super wide. We wanna send it down there, then get out of the gas a little bit, then get back into it, and then just get the car coming back up the track, keep it off the wall. It'll feel a little loose there, and now we can go back to the apron here. And now we can go for a second lap here. A little bit faster speed on the come up. I'm gonna send it a little more. It's a little bit tighter here, but I should be able to make the corner. Not as great a speed coming off, but we just about matched it, so that's actually really good. So maybe second lap is gonna be the better lap here. And then turn three and four. Hopefully we have enough tire left on the sucker. And I get up all the way to the bottom early. And we try to hang it sideways. And bring up the track. Oh, that was a mistake. Dang. Well, if we combined our three and four the first lap and our one and two the second lap, we have a good lap there. So I'm kind of happy just to show you guys those corners in isolation since lap time doesn't particularly matter. Uh, I'll, I messed up there getting to the bottom too early. I thought that I could, I had a little bit more than I did there, which is unfortunate. But if we go back to the turn one and two of this lap, it's a really good example here. You, so the first lap, I was driving it pretty loose, but I, you, the longer you wait to get on the throttle, the looser it gets. And you want it looser because you obviously want the car to turn when you're that close to the wall. But this lap, I pretty much just sent it. So I went down to about half throttle instead of blipping completely out. When you go out to half throttle instead of going out to full throttle, you, you allow the car to be tighter which is sometimes not good, but when you get it to stick and stay off the wall, you gain a ton of speed on entry by doing that. So lap one, I went full out of the gas, had a much simpler, easier corner, but turn three and four, it was a lot tighter because I only went half out of the gas, but I was able to survive it. There's not much to this. Uh, if you find yourself just smashing the wall time after time after time, try to get out of the gas a little bit earlier and then maybe be a little bit patient getting back to throttle. But in, t in theory, whenever you stomp on the gas, your car should not move relative to the seam. And so then let's actually go back in time here and look at my three and four on lap one. So you can see I start turning off the wall about at the green light here. But you see I'm still full throttle. So you keep full throttle for about half the track width and then you drop it down to half throttle about halfway there. And then look at this. I only basically blipped it down to that quarter mark. That's what I get my turn from. So I basically am only getting out of the throttle to rotate the car. And once I get that rotation, I am back on the throttle. And now this exit of three and four, as long as you apex fairly late, this was maybe a tiny bit early, but this was about right on the edge of where it works. You can throttle through the apex. So notice I pick up my throttle about still a lane up from the bottom. And then you just kind of treat the rest of the corner like it's a straight line. 
and you just keep the rear hanging out, not to the point of sliding, but to the point where it's rotating your car. And it'll naturally just keep you off the wall. And yes, the steering wheel made it look pretty hard and it was pretty hard in that case because you're riding the fine line of keeping that rotation so that you don't hit the wall, but then also not sliding your right rear because that just kills your momentum. And you probably hit the wall too because your trajectory changes. Um, so all I can say is that it's a little bit safer the later that you apex. So if you want to take it a little bit less extreme than I did, then you get stay out of the gas for a little tiny bit longer and throttle a little bit less uh, extreme going through the bottom. And that should get you a later apex and an easier exit, but it loses you quite a chunk of time because it's just about keeping up that momentum, right? When you put all that together, this is all just one huge momentum track. But now let's go try out some long run stuff. So at California and Arca, I am a huge, huge fan of having a mixed line. So basically doing exactly what we did there in the qualifying, running the top one, two, bottom of three and four. Um, I can run the top of one and two the whole race. It's not completely ideal because the top of one and two can hurt your tires more than running the bottom one and two. So basically what I do is for the first 15 laps of the race, if I'm under pressure, well, I just shouldn't even be up here. If I'm under pressure, I'll run, run the top of one and two, but I'll always run the bottom of three and four. But then once you get to like lap 15, lap 20 of a race, then you just run top no matter what. And that should be the best route. So let's talk about a bottom line for when you're not really under pressure and you want to save tire. You kind of think of it like three and four, except it's a little bit tighter of an entry. You get down a little bit earlier and you just kind of roll the throttle so that you stick to the white a little bit longer. Now notice it's going to be a quite a bit slower. I think this will end up being about a tenth, maybe a tenth and a half slower when all is said and done. Yeah. So that is why I would not be afraid to just run the top the whole race, especially if you're in a big gaggle of cars. Because the one thing about running the top is that you are always unobstructed unless you get like really boxed in by multiple cars, but that's a lot less likely. When you run the bottom, you run the risk of, let's, let's say I get to the bottom here. See, I had to use a little bit of brake because I overdrove the corner. So this is a little bit better than my first attempt, but notice how I have to use up kind of all the real estate. And if somebody got to my outside, then that would be a lot worse. But yeah, still a better attempt and that's still over a tenth worse. But three and four, delaying that apex. You see I'm using a little bit of trail brake even early like that. You see it gives up a ton of time, but it's just it allows me to keep a very steady wheel. I probably didn't have to there, uh, especially you got to think about the situation that you're in. If you are under a lot of pressure, it is worth that little bit of extra wheel input to get you where you need to go. But if you're kind of chilling by yourself, then you can kind of get away with using that extra bit of brake to save a little extra tire because that will mathematically work out at the end of the race. But anyways, let's say that we are coming up to like halfway through the race. Um, is about the time when everyone likes to go up to the top of one and two. I just don't like the top of three and four at all. Uh, people will try it and it'll work fine, I guess. But the bottom of three and four, in my opinion, is just so much better. But anyways, for the top of one and two, you got to just be a little bit earlier out on the throttle here. And then a little bit more cautious of getting to full throttle. And you can see I'm not quite on the wall because... I'm not the most confident driver by the wall and running like a quarter lane lower is only going to lose a fractional amount of time that only really matters if you're an absolute alien. But this line here is going to work for the entire race. This is kind of my bread and butter truck car track combo and it's just by running this combo the entire race. just. Getting out of throttle early so that I can get back like this, keep the car driving neutral throughout the corner, not even have to really worry about where the car is going. 
it's still a really fast corner and it isn't the worst on tires because you get it to drive pretty neutrally it's not really crushing the right front or sliding the right rear like like an xfinity car would here and then this late apex where you throttle through the bottom of the corner like this and hang out the wheel a little bit without sliding you can see it's still putting in good lap times even though we've run like five laps on a two miler so that's the type of thing and if we balance our tires like that right in the bottom and the top they should be very 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 even tire wear let's go check real quick Yeah, 97, 97. So don't be afraid to run top one and two the whole race if you have to. It's not, I would run the bottom if you had a choice for 10 laps maybe, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference. And my guess is most of you guys will be fighting in packs and that top one and two is just gonna be better. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.